Get down on your knees and tell me you love me. Welcome to the Black Irish Podcast. to an all-new episode of the Black Irish Podcast with myself, Brennan McCorkle, and Mike, the man Crawford. What's up, brother? What up, Brendo? I'm sorry I'm fixing my chains on camera like they're really nice chains, but they're not. They're my chains. Two chains, in fact. <laughs> two chains? Shout out to chains. How are you this week, Brendo? I'm good, man. I got a fortune cookie that uh, really I really connected with. So how do you feel about fortune cookies? I don't believe in fortune. If you want me to tell you, I believe the fortune, no. And the cookie's not pretty that good either, actually. Do you eat the cookie first or after? I usually eat the first half of the cookie. So what I do is I'll break it, eat the first half of the cookie. Then it gives me the hand-holding opportunity to pull out the message, and I'll read it while I'm eating the other half. Unless the message is shitty... Then I spit out the cookie and I throw away the other half because it's garbage. <laughs> yeah, I don't eat fortune cookies at all. Okay, because there's it's some pe- like it seems like a lot of people with fortune cookies. I used to, but they're disgusting. Now. Okay, so you used to? Did you used to keep the messages? Did they used to have deep used meaning to, read to you? The messages. I would use the numbers to play lotto, though. I would tell you that. Yeah, a lot of people do that. I think that's very weird. Why not? If you got these random numbers from Fortune, give it a shot. What if it works? Do you also, you if it works, number? then you would just go to Panda Express every day for the rest of your life. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> what? I would never go back to Panda Express. In my, I only need to hit the lot once. I only need to hit it. What happened time. at Panda Express? I don't eat Panda Express anymore. That's well, where do you Chinese get your fortune food. cookies? Just regular uh, local spots. All right. All right. All right. I didn't know if you were whitewashed and chain restauranting it or. No, 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 no. I, mean, I probably would eat Panda Express, but you realize you you know the difference now when you get older. Yeah, see, <laughs> there. See, you but tell the difference. you can tell the difference. But I've noticed that as an adult, I will. There's sometimes I'll knowingly eat the garbage, and I'll that'll yeah. be like my treat to myself is like, oh man, I know that this is like way worse, but. Sometimes Panda Express orange chicken and all that globule around it is just the best. <laughs> Man, go get you some real orange chicken from like a real Chinese restaurant. You know what's so funny though is like I, I love like I love Duck La Ranch. Duck La Ranch is awesome, it's very good. I hate legit orange chicken from Chinese restaurants. <laughs> That's like really good. I'm like, no, nope, I need the garbage stuff. Give me the slime. I need the slime. <laughs> On the word of restaurants, what's it called? Woggly, moggly, hoggly, whatever. Next time I'm in Cali, we're going there because I saw the pictures and the barbecue looks amazing. It's Dr. Hoggly Woggly's, and it I'm is fat. it is a, an institution in Los Angeles. I've never been there myself. Love barbecue. Never mm. been there. Well, don't worry. We're going, buddy. Oh, I know you we're work going. Work up the courage. I'll get there. Don't worry. I know. I know. I, we'll, we'll put avocados on the side for you. <laughs> when we go to Dr. Hoggly Woggly's. So, all right. There you go. Speak, was this, since we're on the food topic, I wanted to talk to you about something very important. We've already addressed bacon, one of the major food groups. Now let's address another one, French fries. All right? When you go to fast food and you do your drive through order, wherever you go, how many, like what percentage of the French fries do you eat on the way home? It depends on the day. So like sometimes on average. I'll just eat. It depends. I mean, because on average, they might not make it home. Yeah. And then some <laughs> days, I want to make it a meal and enjoy it. So I'm like, Mike, you can only you eat a couple wait. of these people. <laughs> yeah. Like, you got to wait. 
depending on what I got, as like if I'm doing the quick double cheese, no cheese, and the fries, like small fry, oh that that none of that's making it past the red light. Like we're just yeah hoovering. But if I get like the value meal combo, like I want to sit down and enjoy that, so I gotta like talk myself into not eating all the fries because that's part of it. That's part of the process when you're enjoying the meal. Yeah. So it's it's all about what it is that I get. But anything short of an extra value meal and half the time, if I make if the fries make it home, it's a blessing. Like their McDonald's fries are just too good. That's yeah. just I, well, yeah. What now, I, Popeyes or something like that, it's kind of hard because you got to open the box up. And you don't yeah, know, the ones the they put the open. traps in? Fuck yeah, that, bro. Man, like, you know <laughs> what? Dude, things. I didn't even get out of my car to get my food. Do you think I want to open a box to eat it? Come on, man. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. Like, you know, I'm making this way too All right, before we get, get too far down hundred. the French fry train here, you just said you order double cheese, no cheese. Why can't you just order a double burger? Is that not how it's done at McDonald's because they're idiots? Everybody says that to me, but honestly, I probably could. Double burger is just not on the menu, though. Right. The menu says double cheeseburger. So I just read it off the menu and then order it the way I want. I know that sounds weird. Oh, well, world. No, it doesn't sound weird. It sounds like you are dealing with the no, mental my, capacity. No, my the same thing to me. So add you to the list of friends who asked me this same question. Don't worry. This ain't the first time. It wasn't It wasn't on you. It was. I was more <laughs> curious about the establishments, if that's how you, you had to order it. You're a friend than the rest of my friends because they make fun of me for doing it. No, because the people <laughs> you're ordering it from are stupid. They're the idiots in this scenario. So you have to deal with that person. You have to make them understand what you need. So I get it from Which your perspective. Which led to me getting a bitten burger from McDonald's before. What the fuck? You know what's funny? <laughs> is I bet you if McDonald's sponsored up by just giving us a $20 gift card, that would make you happier than anything. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I was happy that day because they gave me so many extra value. Yeah, I was going to say, you actually came out on top on that one. Very All right, so back on to the, that's what, the that's French what fries the whole thing. thing. Me not eating cheese. Anyway, let's go back to French fries. Yeah, so back to the second most important food group. So is McDonald's French fries, is that your favorite? Yeah, it's not close. Yeah. Uh, a, a good cooked McDonald's, a batch of McDonald's French fries, there's no fast food chain that can touch it. No, that's true. See, but I will say McDonald's fails more often at providing a consistent product. Now, I can say that too. <laughs> I can say that too. Dude, unsalted McDonald's fries, that's like, I'll, good thing I don't have a gun. Because I might go back in, by the way, 7 minutes, 50 seconds in today. Um, it, like, <laughs> like, dude, I'm just straight, like, unsalted McDonald's fries is the biggest letdown. That's like blue balls in the fast food drive-thru, like nobody's business. <laughs> we gotta give my man some car sock so he can redo that. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, McDonald's fries not seasoned right or not salted right will make or you even cold. And on the <laughs> oh. bit, and you want to hear some good news? What? Del Taco getting closer to you? Yes, they just opened ten in like south, like southeastern Virginia. So originally not close to me yet. But it's getting closer. All right, because now you're starting to work my language here. So I I agree. As far as regular French fries go, because depending on my mood, I want a different fry. But I would say that if I had to pick, McDonald's French fries is the hands-down winner. So that also gets them in the category of regular French fries. Now, as far as crinkle-cut fries go, Del Taco is going to smash everybody's ass on that one. <laughs> Del Taco's crinkle cut fries are the shit. And the deluxe chili cheddar fries, I'm sorry, Mike, because it's got sour cream and cheese, are fucking the best thing there by far. I bet your asshole is no good after those. That like, just and completely shattered. chicken soft tacos with a cherry Coke. Get out and of chicken town, Chicken soft bro. tacos from Del Taco. I'm with you on that, buddy. Those are the you bomb, know they gotta bro. They got to be made to order for me, but with that being said, I'm with you. Oh, dude, they used to have the Taco Tuesdays where I would legit go and get the, it was called the, uh, they all have stupid names, like the Fiesta Box, Fiesta Platter, some shit like that. I don't know. But it was, ba it was 12 or 15 
uh, like five burritos, uh, five hard tacos, and five soft tacos, and you could upgrade to chicken tacos for a dollar or two. I'd just get all oh. chicken tacos, the, or all of them, and just eat that for Literally, like a dinner. One of the funniest nights of my life in Cali was the Del Taco trip. We almost died, but... It was literally one of the funnest nights of my life in California. Was I there? I don't know. No, you probably weren't there. I don't think it was I... doing it was doing the camp out, so you probably weren't there. No. But what happened at Del Taco? We would just have to make it you know what happens oh. at the camp out. <laughs> Not to talk about, you know, bring the family into it, but so my goodness, you know everybody's yeah, yeah. <laughs> we had to make it there and back. What a rush! Oh yeah, it probably oh, in the man, excursion too, die. right? In in the big yeah. old everybody piled in, <laughs> screaming over each other, playing music. <laughs> like, why? By the way, why do drug people think it's a good idea to fucking blast party jams in the drive-through? <laughs> It's a fucking party, Del Taco! We're trying to order for like 10 people. Hey, bro, you talking about... It was a fun night, though. Man, Uh, those are awesome. Yes, they are. Oh, shit. All right, so... All right, so Del Taco, what do you get at Del Taco? Why are you so excited? Those chicken soft tacos? Yes, and Del Taco stays open all... Like, it doesn't close. Like, I love that. Yeah, there was one time that uh, we were so yeah, okay. Taco that like a decent hour, like what? It's gonna be a, like a hit. Oh, for sure, and especially usually when you're getting a three or four a.m. taco, bro, that's the spot. Well, we used to. So Dallas and I lived in a townhome, literally across the street from a Del Taco. Like, hi, Del Taco employees. We could see you walking into where you work. So. That was like our local spot. We'd walk across the street. There's a, a mobile on the corner. So my buddy, I would go buy my beer from, my Mickey's tall cans, and then Del Taco was across the street. So we would go there all the time on our midnight runs. There was one time we had our uh, Samoan friends, these big, burly people over uh, for a night out on the town. We went to our local cowboy bar, our local Mexican joint. Like We just went to all the local spots bar hopping. So then come three in the morning after we got home, you know, bars shut down at two, walk home, stumble home, manage to get home. It takes us like an hour to walk about three quarters of a mile, you know, one of those (laughs) nights. So then they're like, everybody's like, there's eight of us. Del Taco, got to get Del Taco. One of the guys only has one shoe on. Like, it's one of those really fun nights. So drunk. That they would not let these people into the Del Taco. They had to ma- walk through the drive through to order their meal because they didn't trust them inside the facility. <laughs> what the fuck? It's just because there's, <laughs> dude, they're literally like three giant Samoa, like six foot four, yoked to the gills. Pissed. Oh, so funny. I'm pissed. Why? They, they thought it was hilarious. They had a blast. <laughs> I still would have been pissed. And then I think somebody threw up in their shoe. <laughs> but that's also a good party move. They threw up in their shoe, not in my house. Thanks, buddy. Go do that shit outside. Yeah, Handle your business. <laughs> Winner. All right. So, do you like curly fries? Yeah, but we only have like we don't really have an option for most. Everybody got the same curly fries. Arby's got curly fries. Arby's. Who the hell eats Arby's? Hey, hey, hey! Arby's roast beef. When it a was a dollar, when it was five for five, is good. Beef and cheddars can suck my dick. I'm with you on that one, Mike. In solidarity, beef and cheddars can suck a butt. I remember last time I had Arby's, but now that you said it, I might go get me some curly fries because those things are pretty bomb. Like, the Arby's curly fries where they credit do. in a little bit of Hidden Valley Ranch. Oh, that's... Hidden Valley Ranch can go with anything. Just let me say that to people. And, by the way, if you do get some curly fries, do yourself a favor. Get a regular roast beef. Not the giant, not the mini. Get a regular roast beef. Just a roast beef. Pack of Arby sauce. Pack of horsey sauce. Little bit of uh, maybe like two-thirds horsey or two-thirds Arby sauce, one-third horsey sauce. That's your sandwich. That's the Mike sandwich. If you're going to like it. If you're not, and if you don't like that, then you're right. Arby's just isn't for you. But the curly fries, just get a couple orders of those. 
You know what they also do have now, though, besides the meats, is they have your, uh, like, club sandwiches and stuff. Okay. So you can get a, a like a, they look amazing. I put bacon on for strong Oh. Yeah, I know. We got to do your why. bacon, the hat pastrami sandwich. I'm going to get it to you. I'm going to get it to you. Don't worry. I'm going to hook you up, right? <laughs> do you like waffle fries? I mean, I like Chick-fil-A fries, so I guess I can't say I don't like waffle fries. See, but I only like the seasoned waffle fries, like Carl's Jr. status. I'm a fan of Chick-fil-A fries. I don't know why. I think it's you just love Chick-fil-A. Really. Yeah, like, like Chick-fil-A has a place in my heart always. Even though yeah, they're going to clog it. While, but no, they got good salads too, buddy. Like you can switch it up. They actually do have really good salads. They're, like Wendy's has good salads. For Wait, they fast got one food of the best Cobb salads I can find. Not a lot of people do Cobb salad. Chick Fil A does. So they have one of the best Cobb salads that I can actually find and buy. Ah, oh, interesting. All right. But not a people out. Not a lot of people out here do Cobb. A lot of people in Cali do Cobb. So you can. I'm sure you yeah. can find a better Cobb salad. They do Cobb just for the avocado in Cali. And the egg. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> no, and the egg. Well, speaking of eating like crap, uh, I just got back from vacation. That's what's up. Man. Not the Hawaiian vacation. Not that one. <laughs> vacation is vacation. Vacation man. is vacation. Yeah, we got to take a family vacation with my in-laws up to uh, Pismo Beach, which is like, like two and a half, three hours uh, north of where I live, up, uh, you know, mid central california ish not really but uh <laughs> anyway but uh, you know it's just a fun it's just a getaway trip on the beach like we don't even really do anything it's more of like just go to the oh, you don't need to do anything when you're at the beach bro yeah we it's basically this trip is planned around our meals like where are we eating like at lunch we'll be done with lunch and go okay where are we eating dinner and like that's that's our vacation is we plan around the meals and we kind of just do whatever in between you know, it's Pismo Beach. We have two kids. There's not a ton to do. But, I mean, they have plenty to do, but it's also, like, our kids are small, so we're not doing ATVs and stuff like that. We're just going to the bowling alley and, you know, things of that nature. Going to the beach, you know. Yeah, sounds fun. Not going like crazy. It. They do have an amazing uh, cinnamon rolls place. But I got to ask you, do you know the difference between a cinnamon roll and a cinnamon bun? A what? A cinnamon roll and a cinnamon... No, there's no difference. Right? Why are they two different... Why do they call them different things? A honey bun and a cinnamon roll are different. But a cinnamon roll and a cinnamon bun... What do you prefer? Different. Honey bun or cinnamon roll? Well, being that I only get my cinnamon roll from one place and my, I only eat one type of honey bun, I'm going to go with the cinnamon roll because it's just... Where do you get it? Cinnabon, what else? All right. you... Dude, it's not like you looked at that like we were going to have to have words. Like, I don't know. You said it was very specific. So maybe you have a very specific place that people don't know about. Yes, because that's the only place that has a Cinnabon on the East Coast. You got multiple Cinnabon places? No, not Cinnabon. Like, you don't have a local bakery that makes cinnamon rolls? Not that I know of. Okay, call a local bakery. They make cinnamon rolls. I'm just saying. I didn't know if you had a spot like that. You have all these weird little things that you do that I don't know about. Yeah. When it comes to food, I got weird little spots. But when it comes to bacon, I just go where I can get it. Right, man. You get bacon at Cinnabon? No, no, baking. Like with oh, the baking. <laughs> I was like, where, where did you go, bro? All right. <laughs> <laughs> they put bacon on Cinnabons. I might not eat ever, anything ever again. Just dip it in the icing, eat the bacon, cut the Cinnabon, eat that. Bacon. I mean, that is a sw salty sweet right there. Just salty have a piece of bacon in the middle, yeah. just lined in the middle of the cinnamon bun. Yo, if they hear this, it's still our idea. We're suing, bro. Why do you want to sue everybody? Why wouldn't you just want them to make something delicious so you can eat it? Because they're stealing from us. It's our idea. They're also going to give you the thing that you asked for. I don't, I don't think that should be how it works. Look, Mike, if I want a shrink ray and then somebody designs, builds a shrink ray and then I'm allowed to purchase that shrink ray, I'm not going to be pissed at them that they made the shrink ray. I'm going to be you're happy. You're the first one who think of a shrink ray. If you know for I'm sure. I'm sure you're not the first yeah. one to think of putting food inside other food, Mike. 
I'm the first one to think of putting bacon inside of the actual Cinnabon. Like we ain't talking about some regular cinnamon roll. I'm talking about the okay. Cin- uh, you're you're Cinnabon. talking about the signature Cinnabon. And yeah, they should do a crossover between Trader Joe's and the Cinnabon. See, you, you went no. Trader see, Joe's you went bacon. too far. You went too all. <laughs> you went too hippie. You went too outside of the box. You almost had it. Think, <laughs> think more Chick Fil A. Think Chick Fil A dessert. Tell me you wouldn't order a cinnamon bun with bacon from Chick Fil A. Yes, I would. Yeah, of course. And they are the type of people where their patrons would be like, "Yeah, that sounds about right. Give me one of those too." Mm-hmm. Right. I'm with you. Man. I'm with you. That makes more sense. Okay, Chick Fil A. Still, this idea makes some cinnamon with some bacon in it, but you gotta be good. Hey, bacon. how about this? Bullshit bacon. But Mike doesn't have to pay for his. I'm good. Oh, okay, there we go. Everybody's happy. Overindulge. Yeah, you get one one serving a day for free. Anything more than that, you got to pay for it because you're doing that to yourself. I like that. There you go, baby. So we're on vacation. I do go into this cinnamon rolls place because I'm like, I got to get me one of these things. We're on vacation, and mm-hmm. so there's these. I want to call them young 20-year-old kids. I call them kids. That fucking hurts me right in the testicles to say that. But so <laughs> there's young guy, his friend, ordering the cinnamon rolls. This guy's girlfriend goes, okay, babe, you get the cinnamon rolls. I'm going to get the coffee. I'm next in line. She's like, I'm going to go get a coffee. Do you want anything? He says, I'll take a caramel something with some vanilla. I wanted to rip his head off his shoulders. Like, okay, first of all, that's not coffee. You just ordered dessert. <laughs> and it's not even caramel. It's caramel. So I have two major issues with this thing. And it's like the word, like, what is going on here? Do you want coffee or not? <laughs> Bro, you have a wife that loves Starbucks. You have to understand this new coffee world. Like, yes, you know, but if she had the simple okay. order, if I was going to get coffee and I said, "Hey, babe, honey, sweetheart, my my frilly, lovely lady, what would you like?" And she goes, "Oh, just give me some caramel, something with some vanilla." I go, "Okay, okay." If she <laughs> was going, "Hey, babe, I'm going to get some coffee," and my response isn't. Hey, I'll take, uh, you know, whatever I want. It doesn't matter, Frappuccino, whatever. But you got to know what you want if you're ordering coffee, right? And especially yeah, being so. the, the man in the relationship, wouldn't you be like, hey. Well, usually men know what they want when it comes to food. Like, we're pretty solid there. Yeah. And also, like, just if you do have a frilly order, you better fucking know it. You better know it. <laughs> <laughs> because then it, it takes the weirdness out of it. It takes the, huh, out of the situation. It takes the, oh, this person just knows exactly what they like. Go for it. Guys. I don't know. I just thought that was very weird. And how do you feel about the caramel <laughs> caramel situation? Mm. It plagues me every day. Tomato, tomato. No, it's actually not. There's literally a letter missing in one of those words. <laughs> Carmel is a city in California. That, fun fact, Clint Eastwood used to be the mayor of. True story. The other is a delightful, sticky, sweet substance that makes me happy. I don't know. Yeah, you don't like caramel? Mm, I mean, it depends on what you're putting it on. But like in a candy bar. Twix, okay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't... Who puts caramel caramel. on, like, ice cream? I don't want that. No, but some people eat this like caramels. That has to be weird. Yeah, no, I guess that's true. Like, old people candies. It's extremely sticky in your teeth to eat caramel. Yeah, see, that's that's the thing I don't like about it is the texture and consistency of it. But if it's paired with other things inside a candy bar... Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Yes. See, but that's... Yes, a crispy wafer is good. See, I don't, I don't well, know. Inside man. of a Snickers with nougat and peanuts. Snickers is the best. Snickers Consistently the best. the best. Consistently. You know what's kind of funny, and this may shock the world. I'm getting off a Reese's. 
Whoa, whoa, whoa. What you need getting off of recess? I think I, I burn out. I think it's a party over there. But I think I'm, like, officially <laughs> burnt out on recess. Like, they're still delightful. Don't get me wrong. To have, like, let me put it this way. Halloween's coming up. Unless they're the big Reese's, like the full-size candies, I'm not mm -hmm. opening the minis just to get a taste of Reese's, okay? I'm over that part. What? Yeah, I'm over it. No more mini Reese's candies. I don't, I'm a fucking adult. Look, you can't never give up on Reese's, yo. Reese's are like top two, and they aren't number two. <laughs> All right? We, we're not going to give up. We You never give up on Reese's, bro. I'm not giving like, up on them. So I'm just saying I'm off them. And so good. Like, it's just peanut butter and chocolate. It is so pure. I, <laughs> you, you can't go wrong there, Brendan. Like, you can't go wrong with the Reese's, man. But I'm going to tell you what's really good that you're probably going to think is absolutely disgusting and laugh at me about. What? So I had one of these Snickers with the brownie inside. Yeah. What? Brendan is absolutely amazing. I'm just going to tell you. They are pretty good. I've I've had this as well. I've also had the ice cream version of that because that's how I do it. Ooh, I can't have that, but that sounds <laughs> that sounds pretty good. Hey Snickers, make the non dairy version. Let me get some of that. No, 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 Mike. Mike, here's what you do. Come on. Here's what you do. Run the non look, run the non dairy version. Let me Friday, let me no, no, no. Friday night after your poker game, you go home, you get nice and toasty. Right? And then you make sure your your phone is fully charged. Okay? <laughs> you just set it on the back of the toilet with a six six pack of those ice creams. Just put on the wire and just go to town. Just <laughs> hang out on the toilet for a couple hours, enjoy some ice cream. It'll be fine. Brendan, Brendan, Brendan. I wish I could, bro. You my, could. My body can't take that. Like, the pain I'm in when I go through this stuff that I go through when eating dairy, it's just, like, sometimes it's really unbearable. That is pretty tough. I've also realized that... And the that... pooping part... Sorry to say that on TV. What? But the pooping part is not even, like, that is the actual pain. Like yeah, the stomach pain. My stomach goes through my mouth and hips and shit. Like, it's... So bad. So but you don't bad. take anything when you do you take like any of the lactate stuff? No. See? Why don't you try? I don't know. I'm 37 now, Brandon. I'm kind of just like stuck in my ways, right? Or you could be like, hey, I'm 37. I should probably start acting like a petulant child now and grow up. <laughs> I have seven dollars to buy this preventative maintenance sure, medicine. Seven dollars is about I don't want to be putting this stuff in my body, man, that I don't already been putting in my body. I've made it thirty seven years. Yeah, but if you want to put ice cream in your body you know, have a birthday yeah, for crying out loud. I would just go get some Ben and Jerry's. Ben and Jerry's has a whole section in the ice cream that is not there. They have different flavors, different oh, options. Yeah. Don't worry. I'm fine. Just I'm just saying, Snickers with that particular with brownie, brownie one, uh, you're just going to miss out forever. You don't have to. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. I'll stick with the candy bar. Oh, man. Oh, they make cookies at the fresh market with the brownie inside, too. So Ooh. many you can put the brownie inside of something. There, you know what? A lot of, uh, or not a lot you of. You don't give me some marshmallows. You talk about it. I know okay, that you don't do ice cream sandwiches, but a lot of the places now what they're doing is they'll fresh bake the cookies and then they'll just be like, we'll make you an ice cream sandwich. Like, we'll scoop you the ice cream, stick it on it. Like, we'll make you it right here. Bam. Ooh. Now that sounds amazing. And by the way, that's also, we had friends over, you know, I don't know, a couple of months ago or something for a Dodgers game and a barbecue. And they brought over just a half gallon of ice cream. And a tin of cookies from the bakery at the local store, and we made ice cream sandwiches. And it's like that is brilliant, and it's the same amount of dessert you would have brought anyway. It's just more fun this way. There you go. Yeah, can't be mad at that. I'm with you, bro. Make your own D Y I. What? Well, Do your incense? <laughs> there you go. Incest. 
I don't know. Do yourself. How do you feel about incest, by the way? Disgusting. <laughs> well, I don't feel well, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> it just kind of came out, so we might as well talk about it. But, like, all right. It's, it's nothing to talk about, really. What if you've never met your second cousin, didn't know they were your second cousin? Would you feel would you feel bad to, after that? I fact? would never use names, but I have friends that will openly admit to wanting to, to having and willingness to fucking like their third cousin. All right. How far away is three cousins? I don't know. Is it like a but different still, state? If there's, a, if there's a bloodline being shared, then I ain't doing you, bro. Well, if we all came from Adam and Eve, Mike. What? If we all came from Adam and Eve. What does that mean? We that means we all got the same bloodline, blood right? Nah, we're not sharing a direct bloodline. You know how long ago Adam and Eve were here? Well, how long does it... Okay, well, that's a good point. How long does it take? How many times does it need to break for that to be an okay connection? Like, we don't need to have no knowing family members. Like, yo, I can't say, oh, we show up at the uh, family reunion, and I'd be like, oh, your mom... Oh, that's your mom? <laughs> like, not a, see, here's mom. the thing. You're setting up the scenario at a family reunion. Yeah, that guy's fucking gross. But set it up at a TGI Fridays on a Friday night when you've had a few beers. No, I'm saying after we've already done it, I don't need to come to the next family oh. reunion. Like, oh, that's your mom? Like, so oh. I'm closer than I thought. Yeah, no, no, you know no. What I mean? like, no, no, no. No, you run away, and close. then you never see that person again. Ever, ever. <laughs> but you just you do it the one. You don't that. But how many? You both show all right, Mike. Reunion, which you didn't know you were family. How many degrees of separation do you need to fuck a cousin? Um, about seven. Seven? Seven degrees of separation. Because that's not really your cousin no more. Like, y'all not family. All right. How do you feel about family that gets married in? How do you feel about fucking them? Oh, they're over season. What about right like in? a stepsister? Step sister? Yeah. No, no. If you're both, <laughs> like, okay, right, you so said it was open season. In. I was like, holy shit, Mike. <laughs> no, it's, a stepsister is even open season if y'all are both over the age of like 17, 18. Y'all are grown. No! She's open season, bro. Oh. When you guys go on now, family if you vacations all grow up together, oh. if, this happens, if this happens at like four or five, and y'all grow up together, no, that's she, fucking nasty, she, bro. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's not open season. Okay, no, no, no. But scenario: if, if I'm 22 <laughs> and you're and you're 21, and our parents are 40 something or 50 something, and they meet and get married, when I meet you, I can't try to bust you down. Oh no! no absolutely. Yeah, absolutely yes. You what the season, fuck, bro. Mike? We don't share any blood. There's no blood being. This is not you. You're not really my family. You were married. This shit can end tomorrow, buddy. Like, <laughs> yeah, you but you guys it? also go on family vacations together, and you're gonna fuck and guess, your sister and guess while what's you're having on family vacation. Oh god, that's <laughs> gross. <laughs> hey, all right. In this scenario, did what? your mom remarry or your dad in this scenario? Or does I mean, it matter? Because I, I think it, it matters. Doesn't matter to me. See, if I don't my have no dad, so it clearly would only be my mom. I know, but if house. my dad remarried, I think I could try and fuck my stepsister. I think I could muster up enough to do so it. So, if your mom remarried, you couldn't fuck some dude's, some husband of hers, daughter. No, because then it would be weird. Then it would be like the like my mom was getting me pussy, and I don't, I don't know. <laughs> That's just, it's Your just mom too would never know because she would cuss you out if she found out in most cases. Have you met my so mom? Sure. No. She would be like, yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. I'm sure so we don't want them to know. We're not like going back and telling our parents this happened. But you telling me it ain't going to happen? You crazy. I'm just saying I did not know you had that in you, Mike. Like I could <laughs> definitely fine, see. I could she... see myself getting to that point. But I'm a gross person. You are like a pristine Member of society. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Hey. Oh, if there are man. enough people who watch this, they are going to die laughing when you say that. <laughs> Michael Crawford, pristine member of society. Woo. Yeah. Yes, I am. I am a law abiding citizen. It's That's 2021, what I am. I don't motherfuckers. Break any rules. I don't do anything that shouldn't be done. I am that guy. That's yep. right. That's me, Brendan. That is right. <laughs> Oh, and we're on to the next subject. What's the next on this list? <laughs> oh, is that I was still on vacation. 
So considering that fucking... <laughs> Oh, shit. So, so, anyway, Saturday we went golfing, which was fun. I didn't play very... I played okay. I played okay. My mid-range game was good. I couldn't get out of the tee box, and my putting was hit and miss. So, I was okay. Um, then, fucking... So, Sunday... So, that was Saturday. Then, Saturday night, um, I took the little guy, the three-year-old, drove him home, because Sunday morning was his first t-ball game ever. His first baseball game, so was not missing that. So and I'm coaching, so I definitely can't miss that. So we came home, did the Sunday T ball game, which was fucking awesome. Hilarious. Everything you want a T ball game to be. There's some crying, there was some laughing, some running, it was awesome. <clears throat> and then <laughs> so <clears throat> excuse me. After after the game, come home, feed, shower, go drive back up to Pismo to go meet back up with everybody. And then so we get up there, it was a longer drive, get up like 4.30ish, and then we're, you know, we're ready to go to dinner at like 5.30. So we go, it's it's my in-laws, my mother, father-in-law, my brother-in-law, and then my family, me, my wife, my two boys. So uh, my youngest wants to ride with the grand grandparents, so they ride, we walk to the restaurant. And then we sit down, we're ordering, just kind of shooting the shit, whatever. And then I text you on Sunday night. (laughs) And what had happened was you didn't respond because it was, I think you were probably in bed because it was a Sunday evening. So you didn't respond. So I had nothing to go off of. I just had to. Do this on my own with no, my consigliere was not to be found. Uh, So I, I sharted at the dinner table. What? And it was right after the appetizers came out, but before (laughs) the entrees came out. So you text me Sunday night. I text you Sunday. Look at your phone. I text you. What did I text you on Sunday? Oh, (laughs) <laughs> what did I text you? <laughs> and yeah, and you know what? When I responded, I had no clue what you were talking about. Now it makes perfect sense. <laughs> so what did I text you? My cockiness bit me in the ass again. Because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even remember. I just remember I texted you and you didn't respond, so I was on my own. <laughs> So I'm sitting at the table. I'm sitting. I got my wife to my left. I've got my mother-in-law to my right. And I'm sitting at, like, the head of the table, kind of. <laughs> like, okay. Okay. Because guess what I did, Mike? I was tired, so I grabbed a coffee at a fucking, like, one of those Starbucks double shots at a gas station. Was it a caramel with a vanilla? It was not caramel <laughs> with vanilla. Although maybe that wouldn't have upset my stomach as much. Maybe that kid had it all figured yeah. out. And I don't normally drink coffee, so it was like I was a little rumbly, but on the way there, I was just kind of farting it out. It was my three year old, so I don't care if I hotbox him with my stank ass. So we we're just no, 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 time out, time out. Before you, I'm not cutting your story off. Don't be hotboxing my man Con like that. Like we're not doing that, buddy. Like no, no, no. No, I roll the window down, let it air out, and then I roll the window okay, back up. Okay, it's all right. Okay, but you know, there's some. Right. It's like I wouldn't have been letting him loose had it been everybody in the car or had my wife been in the car. I'd have been a little more (laughs) slick about it. So I was pretty confident in my flatulence uh, capabilities. Like I was I was farting all throughout dinner just doing one of the lean to one sides, lean to the other side. So you spread the (laughs) cheeks in the chair. One of those maneuvers. So I was just doing that, and it's a loud restaurant because it's a crab restaurant. So where they dump everything on the table. So it's people are loud, and you know you can't hear the farts or smell them because it was just it was gas. But I got a little cocky, and then I was like, "Oh, okay. How do I do?" So it was one of those things where I'm like, "Okay, I'm sitting there. I'm like, we just finished appetizers. Can't do anything. Also, we fucking walked here, so 
Uh, what am I going to do now? So I'm like, all right. You go shark. You go take care of that, and those draws go in the trash. Right? Well, here's okay. So the here's the thing. The I didn't know how bad it was. I didn't think it was that bad because it was like I like. You know, your eyes pop when you know something is a little extra. And so I cut it off. But I was like, I didn't know how much came out because I still farted. So I was like, all right. If I just sit here for a few minutes, it'll dry up a little bit. Then nothing. Because I'm also wearing shorts. So I'm like, nothing will fall out (laughs) if it's bad, if it's worse than I think. So I'm like, all right, just hit. I'm like, it's not as much as you think. So I'm like, all right, just get up and go to the bathroom. That it's right in the middle of everything. Maybe they'll deliver the food, pick up the plates in between. It's a good time to get out, stretch your legs, whatever. So I get up, go to the bathroom. Luckily, it was like this, like a dot, like the size of a nickel. Not bad, not bad. And <laughs> it was also like directly below the pucker hole. So it was like, all right, do I chuck the drawers? And I'm like, I can't. What if I fucking shard again? I need a safety net. <laughs> so I can't chuck my drawers. No, no, no. I wouldn't chuck my drawers, but I probably would have left too. Like, I just had to tell Dow Pal, like, babe. I'll okay. Be well, here's the other this part about this distance. story before I finish it. My wife won't find out until she listens to this podcast. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I did. Yeah. So I'm like, all right. So I take the toilet paper. So first I she sit might down. Smack fire like, so <laughs> so then I sit down and I'm assessing. You know, I'm looking down at my boxers while I'm I'm shitting because I still have to shit. Apparently, I'm like I still have to deal with the original problem here. So I'm sitting down. I'm like, all right. I got. I'll take the toilet paper. I'll wipe <laughs> out this little spot. I'll get it as dry as possible. And I was like, do I leave a little bit in there? I was like, no, because then it'll make sounds when you walk. You can't fucking be doing that. You can't have like a toilet paper diaper on you. My man sat through dinner after he shot at himself. I tell you now, you're a lawyer, dude. <laughs> but then, so then I was like, okay, I got my I got my boxer briefs handled. All right, so, a little inside baseball for anybody wondering. Boxer briefs, it is. So I get that. Sort of cleaned up. I'm like, all right. If I put them on carefully, like, it's not going to slide. No, like, I'm not going to get any residual nothing on me. So I'm good there. But now I got to get rid of everything that's inside me. And I'm telling you, Mike, <laughs> this is a beach town restaurant that has one urinal, one sink, and one stall. So it's not a private. It's just barely not a private restroom. So when I tell you that it is... I shut the door to the stall and I'm that guy in the stall where other people were coming in mm-hmm. and you're trying not to laugh because this dude is mm-hmm. blowing up the fucking toilet and you're just like <laughs> trying not to laugh while you're taking a piss because you're like, there is no way that's real sound coming out of somebody. <laughs> and you also feel the embarrassment of like, they know somebody else is in here. And so you're trying not to laugh. You're trying not to laugh. So it just makes it harder and harder. I had like three of those people walk in there. So I like, uh, so then I had to like finish up and walk out like nothing fucking happened <laughs> and sit down and you eat my fucking sit there crap. It's clear though, bro. Like you have to wait till you see no feet, man. <laughs> I couldn't, no, I couldn't, Mike. I was, it was one of those things where once I assumed the position and my ass cheeks touched porcelain, my body went, okay, we're engaged. No, no, no. I'm talking about when you were done, bro. Like, you don't leave out of there until you don't see anything. Oh, food. no, 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 no. I, I, <laughs> nobody was in there. Trust me, the way oh, I was okay. shitting, everybody got out of there as fast as they possibly could. <laughs> <laughs> but even, like, eating, dude, like, eating, like, crazy on vacation and everything. Like, the first shit I took when I got home, like, you know that little aftershock turd? Like, the whatever like that aftershock turd was the size of a normal one that's how crazy we were eating all weekend but it was good it was fun it was worth it i made it out alive it's always worth it man food is always worth it yeah so what i want to ask you something what's the best hotel that you've ever stayed at caesar's palace caesar's nice room nice room so best bed I've ever slept in in my life. I almost brought the motherfucker. 
I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you the Caesar's Palace and I slept in the bed and I wanted to buy the motherfucker. But then I thought about how the hell am I gonna get this bitch home? Because you know, they sell them. They sell the mattress. Oh, really? Why would you? Ew! Why would you want a hotel mattress? I mean, not the exact one I slept on. Oh, definitely. I mean, the one that Oh, they well, yeah, of right course. There. The company that makes them is gonna sell more Samsonite. This I mean, crazy scheme like, to turn a profit. Like, they made more than one. Every hotel I go to doesn't have like the bed the price on the side of the bed for you to buy one. <laughs> oh, yeah, that is, yeah, that's a little more information that I think I'm comfortable with my hotel sharing. Yeah. Oh, okay. What about the worst one? Worst hotel I've ever stayed in? Yeah. Mm. Probably a red roof in man. I was young. I was young and wild at one point. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so do you think, all right, so how bad do you think, like, the worst like Waldorf Astoria, like how, like the very worst one, do you still think it's pretty amazing? Or is it like, man, yeah. fuck you yeah, guys. Pretty, you guys are the Waldorf have, Astoria. Why aren't you guys stepping up your game? This sucks. I mean, they have a standard to help keep them. The worst one is probably still amazing. What about like the best Super 8? <laughs> what? It's a Super 8, bro. Like, yeah, but what about the best one? Do you think the best one is like, oh shit, this place is nice. No. <laughs> no, just, just never eight. know. Yep, just a super eight. Like you might find some holiday and expresses that are better than the other, but yeah. And don't go to New York because all their rooms are fucking tiny. Yeah. Oh, I've stayed in some some real shit bags. I'm pretty sure I got <laughs> bed bugs from one. Like, oh, I've, bro, I've stayed in twenty dollar rooms. <laughs> like the room, like the rooms that people see, I would never. see the rooms I'm that people project, rent. I've had to stay there before. <laughs> They're yeah, like, how many never. hours? And I'm like, uh, I need to stay, like sixteen. Yeah, so They're like, oh, growing up <laughs> anywhere where I need to stay at a hotel when no vacations and none of that shit growing up. So when I got to the point in my life where I was doing that shit, we ain't standing nothing. But I ain't gonna say the best. But it's somewhere near the best if I'm going out of town or some shit. I'm in a hotel. It's got to be decent, bro. It's got to be a nice hotel. Fuck that. I can stand that little piece of shit. <laughs> like, I... Yeah, well, now. But, yeah, yeah I've, stayed some, I've stayed in oh, some. Oh, I, I didn't start staying in hotels and traveling until I was probably like 25, bro. Like, I'm, <laughs> it wasn't nothing before that. I'm, I'm a late bloomer to the park. Yeah, well, I mean... Anytime, anytime I ever stayed anywhere, I've only been on a few vacations ever, but like anytime I ever stayed anywhere, it was always like an overnight, like a motel, like not <laughs> like the only time I ever stayed in a hotel was going to Vegas. Like that's oh, the only hotel, time that you stay in a hotel. hotel holiday Inn. That's when I stayed that season in Vegas. It was literally amazing. I'm not going to lie to you. I've stayed at a couple nice places in, in Vegas. So we stayed at actually the Red Rock. Um, we got stayed in a suite there once, um, which I was. I remember what the nice. bed was like there. I stayed at the Red Rock. I, yeah. It was okay. The room was fucking cool. The bed was okay. Um, two person tub that was nice. Um, I had one of those for my prom night. Amazing. Ooh, look at you, you fucking... You would get a fucking room with a tub on your prom night, you slick motherfucker. <laughs> I didn't pay for it. <laughs> I was drinking Someone fucking was. Rolling Rocks in a Motel 6 with fucking, like, ten other morons. I think somebody burnt my fucking eyebrow with a cigarette, too. I'm not what, sure. Your prom night? I think it was prom, yeah. Or graduation. Oh. I don't know. Fucking, yeah. I don't care. They're all the same. <laughs> or all two of them. I only went to those two things. There you go. Oh, so speaking of things coming to an end, J.J. Reddick's done. He had a nice little career. Would it's you rather good. have J.J. Reddick's... Shoot, all right, would you guys... Would you rather have J.J. Reddick's 15 years... Of solid service in the NBA, or be 
just like a one-off guy that just happened to be on a championship team for one year, and then you're kind of like out of the league in a, in another year. You're a nobody, but you got a ring. No, I'm in J.J. Reddy's career, man. Fuck those rings. I want the money. J.J. Reddy's made a hell of a lot of money in this league. Yeah. <laughs> he has done well for himself. As a spot-up shooter who can't guard a fucking fly. How about that? Shout out J.J. Reddick. VA, baby, stand up. And he's got his number fucking retired at Duke, doesn't he? I mean, he was amazing at Duke. Yeah, he was lights out. Yeah, because college is a different game. A hundred percent. You got to be able to create your own shot in the NBA, buddy. <laughs> Coach K can't draw you up plays here, baby. Yeah, that's right. So how do you feel about NFL Week 2, Mike? I see you got your Cowboys jersey on. You're feeling good that you're, what, 1-1? One one. I feel great. I don't care about what else went on. I didn't win any fucking money, though. I have to win. I need to win money. But outside of that, Cowboys win my fantasy team. My position players fucking seem to suck. And Dak, with his no-touchdown throwing ass this week, giving the ball, we running the ball all fucking wild crazy. But we'll be back next week. I ain't worried. It's mm. one week. Some one off. Some one off. It's a one. I'm down O two in our league though. That sucks again. I stink like shit in our league for some reason. Yeah, you and the Maestro are the only two that uh, have yet to have a victory. But it's only okay. two weeks. Who do I play this week? Because I'm definitely getting. I don't victory. know. I don't follow your team. I only know when I play you. All I know is I play I my wife. Play you. I play my wife this week. Keep oh, messing you with sure? your microphone. Oh my bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know you you're getting you antsy. This week? <laughs> yeah, I play Dow this week, so. And we're projected to finish within like two points of each other, so it's going to be interesting. You have to make a bet, a side bet. Nah. Anytime we've done that, you gotta clean the house. Fuck that! Yeah, you can't I pay somebody to clean the house. I, I just thought about that. Like you. Pay and me. by the way, that's what I do every day. It's called housekeeping. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we've done that shit before, maybe. But we've done it like you have to wear a, you know, I don't know, a jersey or or fucking, no, you know, you got to give me a massage or fucking, you got to make me dinner, those kinds of stupid things. Right, that's getting too personal. Well, I want to know what y'all got going on. Anyway. <laughs> I didn't say we were sucking each other's dicks, Mike. Whoa, whoa. Uh, my friend Dow Powell doesn't have a dick. No, she like, doesn't. Calm down. Calm the fuck down. Bro. But it's um, just as ridiculous as you thought I was saying something just like that. You start talking about massages, bro. Like, husband and wife massages can go any which way. Like, we don't need to talk about you and your wife giving each other massages. Bro. Mike, just don't. Mike, I've been married for 10 years. Massages go from neck mean? to shoulders. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in that case, talk about all the damn massages you want, bro. Every now and again, I'll throw in a foot if we're getting kinky. <laughs> You're a fucking fool, man. Uh, you know who else is a fool? The fucking Baltimore Ravens fans. What a bunch of cunts those guys are. Dude, literally, I never noticed it until this week. They stole the Eagles chant. They do R A V E E N S Ravens. I'm like, I don't know. Isn't that cool the Eagles week, chant? They played the uh, Omar to the Wire, his uh, whistle when they came out. So for this week, I'm a Ravens fan. Shout out to Omar. Shout out to the Wire, the greatest show I've ever made. And uh, rest in peace, my guy. Rest in peace. Yeah. All right, that was my moment. All right, your moment. Well. <laughs> Amy Winehouse. Amy Winehouse, you're skipping ahead. But I didn't skip ahead because you don't know what I'm talking about. I just happened to see her name somewhere, so I'm sorry I said it out loud. All right. Well, just for that, I'm going to tell you a joke that I made that you're not going to like. So how about that? Go ahead. <laughs> I was going to skip it, but now I'm going to tell you. So somebody was t- <laughs> tweeting out about, like, uh, Hawkinson. It was like, Hawkinson is the blank best tight end in the world. Like, you're supposed to give him a number. Which, by the way, the NFL has the top 50 tight ends in the world, you fucking asshole. They're all in the NFL. So you don't have to say the world, okay? The NFL has found them. Fucking idiots. So I don't know if the NFL has found the top 50. It's only 32 teams. Yeah, some but you have to think... ain't better than college players. That's true, well, but ahead. some teams have two tight ends that are better than starters. 
Oh, gotcha. You know what I mean? Because I did originally do that math, and I was like, no, it's more than 32, because some guy's second is better. You know, O.J. Howard's better than fucking, you know. And break shit. They got three more. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know, that's why I said 50. It's a nice, nice yeah, little cutoff number. I did my research. But, so, my response to that was Aaron Hernandez, number one. Kellen Winslow Jr. number two, and there's still room on the podium for Hawk if he can get his shit together. Hey, yo. First of all, rest in peace, Aaron Hernandez. Aaron Hernandez is a hell to find out his story and understand like how wild it is what all this happened for. It's just yeah. a whole different thing. And Kellen, <laughs> that guy's a fucking a maniac. Video on this guy. <laughs> this guy's a complete. Not, and you think about it as a youth fan, we should have knew the day he went off in the locker room about the iron fatigue shit. It's like, yeah, man, we go to war. We're in this war. And you should have known something something was wrong with that guy in the head. Yeah. My man is felling all the way off the wagon. Like, I was watching YouTube on him. I ain't going to talk about what he's in jail for and all that shit because it ain't my business and I ain't going to drag those people through the mud. Yeah. But dude's crazy. He's Dude, fucking bonkers. Bona fide. <laughs> Like, nuts. Oh, he could have been in Space Jam. He's a looney tune. <laughs> no, I just... <laughs> looney tune, bro. Oh, man. But looney tune's got some good tricks. Do you have any dick tricks, speaking of tricks? Dick tricks? No, yeah. I don't, I don't have tricks. You don't I mean, have you tricks? Like, you know your dick. dick has a knuckle in it when it gets hard, but you can still move it a little bit? <laughs> a lot of people don't know that. Oh, I'm sure they ain't they ain't trying to learn it from you either, bro. No. Well, mine's more <laughs> like a tiny little ratchet. But <laughs> do you know about the P button? The what? The P button when you're going P. I I, I know. I don't, I don't, I don't want to. No, it's a it's a medical <laughs> science. Yeah, I know. It is. I understand. No, if you're standing up at a urinal and you're going P. Right, and you push, and once you're, you think you're done, right behind, under your balls, if you push, like, right, that little button, like your chode, it'll clear out what's still in the chamber. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. I'm just saying. Shape. All right. Shape. Okay. Let me ask <laughs> about this. Back in the day, when you were younger, did you ever do the trick when you were with a girl and you would lift up your pants, like, to show her you had a boner? The what? You never did that? You never lifted up your pants with a boner and showed a girl what? like, hey, check this out. No. <laughs> Lift up your pants with a boner? Yeah, so like you're sitting down and then you're not using your hands and you start moving your pants up and down at the zipper area. Brenda. You don't you never did that. No. You never done that by yourself just to see if you could? No. Well, I know what you're but doing how today. What do you get? Oh, extremely bored. <laughs> to be like making a dick jump in your boredom. <laughs> like, dude, dude, okay. You got to try it. You got to try it. Me and you got to have some conversation about who Mike used to be. I think that's what, I think that's what part of this. this okay. This, well, then this, let me tell this, you, this, Brendan used to be the kind of guy that would be like, hey, girl, look at this boner. It's lifting up <laughs> jeans. Isn't that impressive? <laughs> It might be These are no fucking guy. basketball shorts over here. This is high quality <laughs> denim. I'm lifting weight. And Mike used to be the type of guy that could be like, "Hey, you see this boner? Do something to it." You see that? <laughs> like, well, I was a little more casual about it. <laughs> so, uh, can you get a boner with a little bit different back then? <laughs> okay, so if you want to, again, this may be one of those things where I've had too much time on my hands, but. Can you get a boner without looking at porn or like without being aroused? Can you just yeah. get a boner? No, 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 no. But I can get myself aroused from thoughts. That's not. But no, no, I have to be aroused to get a boner. Like I'll just randomly get boners, bro. Except when you wake up in the morning. Oh yeah. yeah. That no, I'm not talking about random boners. I'm mm. talking about like, you know what? I think jerking off sounds good. It's about time for that maintenance. <laughs> I don't, 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 doesn't like you just stand around. Just hold your fist in the air and you know. yeah, will it to life? Yeah, no, I'm good, brother. It takes me about 110 seconds. 
on average. I did it three times. <laughs> well, I wanted to, I did it once and I was like, I wonder if that was fast or not. So I had to wait a couple of days and then see if that was fast or not. And it turns out it's about average. I average about a little less than two minutes every time. It's Sounds pretty impressive. Like subject. We don't want to talk about you jerking your penis, bro. No one wants to hear that. I'm going to just promise you. I All promise right. you no one wants to hear that. All right. Well, then uh, I'll leave you with one last dick <laughs> anecdote <clears throat> since I know you like talking about it so much. Mike, did you ever know that I had my dick pierced? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Time out. I don't want to know that. We're <laughs> too close of friends to ever disclose that information to me. So, like... Just act like we're gonna act like you never said that, okay? Thanks. All right. Anyway, what's the youngest girl that you would date at this age right now? Yeah, Mike in his current Cowboys uniform. Thirty. Yeah. What's the youngest you would bone? Thirty. No. <laughs> Are you serious? Yes. Fuck, you're a liar. What's the oldest you would what date? What's the who am I lying? But bro, I have nieces. I have women in my life that Yeah, see, but you're also getting to the like point where you're old enough to where there is another generation. Like, okay, if I was gonna if I was not didn't have the perfect family, everything, I was in Mike's scenario. I'm me, but I'm just single. I think right about 30, 31 is about dateable like that's that's the lowest that's the limit there but fucking i mean i don't know like second half of your 20s i'd still go there second half of your 20s you're like an irresponsible fully formed adult sometimes you gotta fuck older people when you're in your 20s worry about it but uh i ain't dating nobody in their 20s bro all right, so we're more of a cougar situation. So what's the what's the oldest you would date? If you got money, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> That's some straight fucking honesty for you right there, baby. I love it. That's the kind of shit I'm here for. That's why we do this. <laughs> that's why we do this, baby. Uh, to fuck old broads. Oh. <laughs> no, that's not it. No. Wills. <laughs> we don't take no prisoners. We don't take no shit from anyone. We don't take no for an answer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe 45, bro. Like, But you got to be like really good looking for me to do. Yeah, you got to be like one of those yoga 45s, right? You got to be Stacy Dash fine. See, I. Like... See, I. Yeah. I was thinking more 90 Day Fiance Stacy. But. No, I think, uh, I see, I, I still think even dating, like, I don't see dating out of my decade, like late thirties, maybe early forties, but that's about it. Now, how old would you fuck? 45. What? Oh, see, that's where I flip flop. That's I'll, I don't care. If you look good, (laughs) I don't care how old you are. I'll fuck you. Bro, so you're telling me if a lady was 70 but looked like... 70? Like, Come on, you got to get more in my actual ballpark here. Who do you think is flaming hot? Like, at 70, it's not getting wet anymore, Brendan. Like, let's just... They have lubricant, Mike. Bro, like, you... I would say like probably, that. honestly, no. a not brittle 85-year-old is probably about where I'd cap. <laughs> And I'm, the problem is, I'm only chuckling because you're laughing, but I'm serious. Kick us off of every platform that we're on. Like, you, you're wild. My man said... I didn't say I was going to go volunteer at old people's homes and start fucking them. I just said... What? What? I said I didn't say that, Mike. I said I didn't say that. I just... Okay. I'm saying... But you said you weren't married and had a non brutal 85-year-old. It was on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Like, I would, you know, I got to make sure that we have all the pillows and stuff so you don't break those brittle bones. But, you know, you got to be gentle. But that's it's all good. That, that, yeah, I'm going to let you have that, buddy. Whatever. They can make you a nice, <laughs> nice three o'clock dinner. You know, I mean, there's some, there's some 
good stuff there. You get a little butterscotch. Some Neapolitan ice cream, maybe. It's good stuff. Yeah, uh, for you. Fun. You know what's funny is I just realized that my my grandmother that's alive is in her early 70s. And which makes you even more disgusting. So, yep. <laughs> <laughs> How old would Princess Diana be today? No clue. Her birthday's today? No. Oh, but I'm wondering old. how, like, she would probably be the oldest chick that I'd be willing to date. Like, she would probably still be pretty hot for however old she would be. Like, in her <laughs> 50s or something. Mm. Like, I might stretch for Princess Di, Lady Di. I don't know. Yeah. Shout out to my man, Ro. Today is his birthday, actually. Hey, there you go. Happy birthday. What, what do you think... <laughs> Uh, they're going to be watching on their birthday. I don't know. It's probably sleep. Well, Can't what are you watching on it, their birthday? I ain't watching nothing. Today is rewatch the Cowboys game day, man. I gotta, uh, critique my team, man. Break down some film. Oh, are you watching any episodic television? Not at this present time. I gotta, um, I'm watching Raising Kane and now that the season over, I'm catching up. How far are you through, uh, The Wire? Season two. Season two. Well, I've got a couple of little ditties for you. I don't know if they've come across your radar or not, but if they haven't, I think you'll like them. So I started watching uh, Level Playing Field on HBO Max. It's just had its first episode, and it was about the Midnight, Midnight Basketball League. And so basically, it's I I didn't know what it was, but it's it's a series. I thought it was like just a documentary or something, but it's apparently a, a series. They're half hour shows. Like I said, it's only been one episode, but it's basically about like all the inner cities and shit like that. Like the the kids that don't have the opportunity or facilities to you know, try and better themselves and, and not be involved in crime in the neighborhoods and try and just do something positive and be a, a social, you know, positive social part of society, all that kind of shit. Um, it's, it's pretty interesting. Like it's, uh, it's insightful. And I kind of was like, yeah, it's TV 14. So it's not, <clears throat> it's not super gritty or anything, which I usually like. It keeps me interested, but it was definitely like they let you decide what to do with it. They're like, here's all the information. Kind of like the untolds. Like, here's the information. Do with it whatever you want. You know? Which I, I appreciate instead of every fucking Netflix murder mystery documentary. It's like, okay, it's going to start. Somebody got murdered. And then at the end, it's like, do you actually know anything? Did you get some resolution? No? Okay. It's not like that. It's not an open-ended thing where it's like, we just didn't find an answer. It's like, here's all the information. You form an opinion. So I started watching that, which was good. And then I also started watching Sweet Life Los Angeles. Bro. Never heard of that also on HBO Max. This, I have a feeling, is right up your alley. <laughs> you are either going to have watched the entire first season by the next time we see each other, or you're going to be like, this thing's stupid. I'm not going to watch it at all. I think it's going to be the latter. Or the former. Well, well, I mean. hey, uh, you said Sweet Life, Los, Sweet Angeles. Life, Los both, Angeles. I'll give them both a try. I would say start with Sweet Life, Los Angeles first. It's just about uh, just like black entrepreneurs, like 20-something year olds in L.A. trying to fucking get their hustle on. But it's also, it's like this group of friends that they just show all this fucking, it's kind of like Tidal Town High. It's just fucking, there's a lot of drama between the friends and they all have previous relationships with each other. So it's very interesting. It's good. Except they have this newfound fucking, the way chicks wear the makeup these days, I don't know. With like the inside their eyes by their nose and then they swoop it down their nose. I don't know. It's weird as shit. But I think they stole that look from Amy Winehouse. Full circle. <laughs> who is on this week's Spotify playlist. Along with the baby. So, what are you going to do about it, Mike? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing at all. I might listen, though. I don't really listen to the baby anymore. I listen to the little baby. The baby's kind of 
Um, he's kind of like repetitive to me, but he's got some good music. Everybody, give it a listen. Go listen to a spot about Amy Winehouse fire. Yes, Amy Winehouse is very fire. Yeah, I enjoy her very much. All right, well, be sure, everybody, to check out that Spotify playlist as well as follow us on Twitter if you want to see me ruin people's days. Uh, you can also follow us on Instagram at Black Irish Pod. Follow Mike at Black Irish 213. Follow me at Brendala7. Uh, do us a favor, follow us, subscribe, like, review, show whatever the hell you want to do. Not. It don't hurt to show love. It don't cost you a thing. You Take don't... some form of action this week for us if you would. We would appreciate it. And on that note, oh. love each other this week. I love you, Mike. Love you too, Brendo. Adios. <laughs> <laughs>